today. Will you pray, pray with me, please? Holy and loving God, we come before you again this day with great thanks upon our lips, thanking you for this blessing of life that you have given each and every one of us again today. We thank you for always being present in our lives where we can bring our burdens to you and leave them with you and leave this place a little lighter than maybe we came in. We ask for your blessing this morning, dear Lord, that we should know you a little bit more in our lives. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I just want to say, too, uh, there's um, just a lot of people asking for prayers and prayers being answered um, all the time, but for some reason this week um, it just seems to come to mind a little bit, and I usually don't like to highlight one person over another too much, but how about that soloist we just had in that choir? This man has been a blessing to this church for so long. To hear your voice so strong and singing praise to God just brought a tear to my eye. Thank you. Now, I've been asked several times during my lifetime if I believe in miracles. And the answer has always been yes, exactly. Well then, depending on who it was that was asking me this question, whether or not I believe in miracles, we would either have a very nice conversation about the legitimacy of miracles or a different conversation on how could I say such a foolish thing in our modern age. Well, let me start by addressing that second conversation I sometimes have, which I'm going to come back to in a few minutes, but let me say that now that that conversation, the one about miracles being something only fools believe in, that, in my experience, has more to do with someone's understanding about prayer than miracles. More on that in a moment. The conversation I like to have about miracles is the one where there is an acceptance of things and powers greater than our understanding. Perhaps first we should define what we mean when we say the word miracle. I found three definitions I would like to share. One, a miracle is a highly improbable or extraordinary event that brings very welcome consequences. Two, it is an amazing achievement or outstanding example of something. And then three, a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of the divine. As you can see, it is only in that third definition that God's handiwork is assumed to be in play. And that is where some people get tripped up. But we actually, however, use the word miracle quite a bit in our common language. We say it all the time. When an accident happens, all sorts of people will say, well, it's a miracle that no one got hurt. Or when a new medicine is developed that has very positive effects on life expectancy or, and quality of life, we call it a miracle drug. 
It is only when something happens that is very personal to us that we begin to believe that, that God may actually be with us after all. Our gospel reading this morning is a very familiar one about trusting that God is with us, especially during the storms of our lives. And when we believe that, miraculous things can happen. Things that are unexpected, improbable, amazing, and downright divine. Facing impossible odds, we suddenly receive divine guidance and energy, allowing us to do greater things than we imagined just a few minutes ago. The impossible becomes possible as we tap into these deeper energies. And natural laws, instead of being broken, are revealed to be more miraculous by God's design. And the greatest miracle of all is that we do have the power to tap into these energies. And we do it by faith. For faith opens us up to enormous amounts of inspiration and energy. For though we sometimes feel ourselves to be weak, we are strong in God's love. And God's grace becomes sufficient for us to respond to any storm. In the Gospel story, Jesus and his disciples are in a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee. It's a big sea. And what they are doing is they're moving from the, the Jewish side to the Gentile side. From the side where they were at home over to the side where they are strangers. From the side where life is very familiar to them to the side where not so familiar, different. We may never have crossed the actual Sea of Galilee in our lives, but I know each and every one of us has been in that boat before. For this is not just a story about the weather and the boat trip. It is a story about life. It is a story about faith. It is a story about fear. And wherever you find one of those things, you usually find all three. Sometimes the sea of life is rough. The wind is strong, the waves are high, the boat is taking on water and maybe even sinking. We all know what that is like. I know each, each of us could tell a story about how a storm suddenly blew into our lives. Some of our stories begin with a phone call or a doctor's visit or news we did not want to hear. Some of our stories start with choices we have made or mistakes that have occurred. Things we wish were different but are not. Other stories will tell about the difficulty of relationships, hopes and plans that fell apart, or maybe just the struggle to grow up and find our way no matter what our age. Some storms seem to arise out of nowhere and take us completely by surprise. 
while others build and brew off to the side as we sit and watch. The point is, storms happen. They are natural in the world, and they are natural in our lives. Storms of loss and sorrow, of suffering, of confusion, of failure, of loneliness, of disappointment and regret, of depression, of uncertainty and second-guessing ourselves, storms of thoughts and voices that are raging in our heads. Regardless of when or how they arise, all storms are about changing conditions. Things we were were expecting to happen do not. And circumstances seem too much for us to handle sometimes. We find ourselves sinking. And the water's pretty deep. Only a miracle will save us. The disciples felt this way. Lord, they said, don't you care that we are perishing? Help us. And Jesus, I love this story, Jesus, who had been sleeping during all of this, while this storm was overtaking the disciples, Jesus simply gets up, addresses the storm by saying, peace, be still. And immediately there was quiet and calm, both on the sea and within the disciples. This passage proclaims God's actual ability to work with the forces of nature and bring peace during a storm. Yes, there will be, will be hurricanes, and people will still become homeless or even die during these storms. And many then question, well, why this one and not that one? Well, that once more, I think for about the third or fourth week in a row now, is where we talk about where a mature faith is necessary. A faith that understands that the real peace and calm that Jesus commanded was only evidenced by the calming of the storm. The real miracle actually took place within the disciples. For we must remember that sleeping Jesus was in the exact same boat and the exact same storm as the disciples were. He was surrounded by the same water, blown by the same wind, and beaten by by the same waves. It was his response that was different. While the disciples fret and worry, Jesus fell asleep. Jesus sleeps in peace and stillness, even as the world was hurling its worst at him and and his disciples. His sleep reveals that the greater storm and and the greater threat is not the wind and the waves and the water that surround us, It is not the circumstances in which we find ourselves that are the real threat. The real storm, the more threatening storm, is always the one that churns and rages within us. That interior storm is the one that blows us off course beats against our faith and threatens to drown us. Fear, vulnerability, and powerlessness blow within us, and the the sense of abandonment and, and the unknown and judgment and criticism of not only others but ourselves are the waves that pound us. And all too often, myself included, 
anger, isolation, and denial become our shelter in that storm. Peace, be still. Jesus speaks to the wind and the sea. Jesus isn't changing the weather so much here as inviting the disciples to change. He's speaking to the wind and the waves within them. The disciples have been pointing to everything that's going on outside of them. That's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. Look at that. Help me with this. Jesus now points to what is going on inside of them. Why are you afraid, he asks. You still don't have enough faith? Jesus' words are more about us than the circumstances of our lives. Storms happen. And faith, more faith, better faith, stronger faith, the right kind of faith, do not eliminate storms. Faith does not change the storm that is going to happen. It changes us. Faith does not take us around the storm, but through it. Faith is what allows us to be still, to be peaceful in the midst of the storm. It is what it means that we do not have to internalize every little storm that comes up in our lives. And how do we get this faith? That's always a good question. We live it. You know, there's a saying that comes from a number of different sources that says, you know, you can't think your way into a new action. You have to act your way into a new th- way of thinking. And that's the way it is with faith. Just start living it. Through prayer is a good way. Coming back around to prayer, faith and prayer, they're interconnected, inseparable in my mind. For prayer is a, a, prayer is a way of life. You know, it's not a rote set of words. It's how we live. Of course, there are different forms of prayer, and we do several here on Sunday mornings. But life prayer is the kind of prayer that seeks to put us into God's presence so close that our breathing becomes God's breathing and our thoughts become God's thoughts. And that's not necessarily done by saying the right words or or worrying about saying the right words. It is done by centering our entire beings into God's loving embrace. And when we do, the Spirit of God blows through us and within us more mightily than the winds of any storm. Do I believe in miracles? You bet I do. How do I know they are real? I feel them in my prayers, meaning I feel them in my life. May we all know the power of God's love in our lives, and may we all put our faith in the miracles of God. For these things I pray. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? 
Holy God, you meet us in the ordinary routine of our lives. You surprise us with your presence. You see us as we are and help us to see who we can become. Strengthen us, dear Lord, when we weigh ourselves down with with burdens you would gladly take from us. Restore us to ourselves and reconcile us to one another. Grant us the compassion of Christ in our hearts. Fill us with a thirst for your righteousness. Instill in us a passion to do your kingdom's work. Holy One, and we, we lift our needs and our prayers before you. We remember all of those who are grieving this day and we name them in our hearts and ask you to comfort and sustain them. We remember those who are ill and suffering and those who are homebound, those anxiously awaiting the results of tests and treatments. Touch them with your healing hand and give them your peace. God, we remember those whose lives are are threatened daily by, by hunger and ignorance and poverty and war and disease. Stay near to them and bring them help and hope. Help us, O God, to be a channel through which your love, mercy, and peace flows to others. Open our hearts so we may receive and share in the blessings of your desire. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.